Well, the Mars rover recently took a break from exploring the red planet to snap a few photos. NASA then digitally combined those photos to create a panoramic view of Mars. And National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fizekas is here to talk about that picture. Hey, Andrew, good to see you. Tell us more about this view of Mars and what it reveals. So this beautiful panoramic view is uh, we're sitting inside a large crater called Gale Crater. It's about 150 kilometers across. And there's a mount, mountain at the center. It's called Mount Sharp. And this is where the Curiosity rover is currently located. It's on the slopes of this mountain at the center of this giant crater on Mars. It's been there now. Let's not forget that Curiosity has been on Mars since 2012 that it's been exploring. And it's traveled about 18 kilometers since then, stopping and going and, and I, analyzing the rocks and soil along the way. And in fact, in this panoramic view, you, if you look very carefully, you will see a winding little track that shows w the exact path that the, uh, the, the, uh, the rover has taken. The little tracks in the sand that it's left behind is visible oh, there. Yeah, here's our, uh, here's our arrows pointing out some of the features right now, Andrew. Yeah, and, and those mountains that are in the distance, those, uh, those are about uh, 20 kilometers away. Those are the, the, that's the rim of the crater that you can see in the, in, the, in the far background, those mountains. And so now the, the rover is in the middle of traveling up the slope of this Mount Sharp, that's at, that, this mountain at the middle of the, uh, the crater. So we're getting this beautiful panoramic view, at, uh, and the landing site below us sits about 300 meters. So it's traveled about that, that much in altitude, the rover, in, since 2012. And the best is still to come. This rover keeps on chugging along, and it'll be going up that slope even higher, getting a better vantage point. This is really amazing to look at. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, frankly, after, after having lived in Utah for a number of years, this kind of looks like an area just south of Salt Lake City to me as well. But, Andrew, what powers the rover and allows it to make this kind of sojourn that it's making, taking these pictures that it's taking? Yeah, well, it's using a, a, a nuclear generator on board. This is what's making it all possible. The previous rovers that we've seen in the past decades, they have always used solar energies. They've had solar power panels that are sitting on top of the rovers. And so they completely rely solely on getting energy from the sun. And of course, after a while, there's a lot of dust that accumulates on the solar panels, uh, cutting down the energy. So over many years, those solar-powered rovers start doing less and less. However, mm -hmm. Curiosity has this very powerful nuclear generator on board that allows it to work day and night for, at l we expect, for many years to come. Uh, Andrew, are there any Earth applications that may come from these amazing pictures and this uh, amazing mission that the rover has undertaken? Well, you know, we're talking about fundamental science and being able to understand uh, really uh, uh, how a planet works, the history of the planet, the climate of the planet. We think Mars was once very much like Earth, filled with large bodies of water, flowing rivers, lakes, oceans, but it all disappeared. And Curiosity is really trying to understand the ancient history, the climate of Mars, mm -hmm because something went wrong with the climate on Mars. And of course, we know that on Earth, yeah. things happen here as well with our climate. So there's a connection. National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fizekas, always a pleasure to speak with you, Andrew. My pleasure. Clear skies. Mm.